Do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Ralph Waldo Emerson In this episode, we charter a Lucia 40 from Fontaine Peugeot, and we take you guys along as we tell you what we like and don't like about this particular boat. Hi guys, here we are in Annapolis, Maryland. Dave and I chartered a Fontaine Peugeot Lucia 40, and we want to take you aboard and show you what we like and what we don't like about this boat. This is one of the boats in contention for us to buy. Come aboard. Hey guys, here we are aboard the Fontaine Peugeot Lucia 40. And one of the things that I like most about this boat is this large open cockpit area. Pan around, honey. We had our friends, the Spalding family, over yesterday for our a day out on the water. And they have, it was Dana, Greg, and their two girls, Mia and Sophia. We were all sitting out here at lunchtime having lunch and drinks and did not feel crowded at all. I believe you can sit up to eight to ten people at this table. Uh, we had six and it was very comfortable. And as you can see, it's a nice, large, open cockpit. This is one of the best things that I like about this boat, including the hard top cover here. One of the things I don't like about this boat is the swim ladder. The swim ladder just pulls up. It to me seems like it's a little in the way. And then unless you take a bungee cord yourself, there's no way of, there's nothing that Fontaine has built into this to hold it steady for when you're sailing or motoring. Here we are at the helm. I like how large this seating is. It's comfortable and you can have several people at the helm at once. I also like that it has a cover bimini, a cover top. However, Dave and I are looking for a hard top cover and the Fontaine Peugeot does not offer the hard top as an option for this boat. Yesterday while we were sailing with the Spalding family, I was at the helm and I was wanting to do a, a tacking by myself to see if I could handle the boat by myself. I like the placement of the winches and all the lines come back here to the helm. So as I'm tacking, one of the things that I notice, I'm like, this is great, I can do this by myself. I'm doing the wheel, I'm doing the lines. However, I could not see the instrument panels. When I was sitting here before tacking or, or even just driving the boat, I was looking and I thought, this is a nice setup, I can see everything when you're sitting. However, when you're actually driving the boat and if you're doing anything with the lines, you can't see the instrument panel because of the way it's set up. I think it would be a better layout if it was more at an angle because I had to look back like this with the lines in hand to see where my what my wind speed, the angle um, when I was tacking, and what degree I was tacking at. So that's one of the things that I would suggest maybe while you're looking at boats, make sure that the instrument panel is something that you're going to be able to work with while you're out there doing a night watch on your own. Now that we're in the salon, one of the things I'd like to show you that Dave and I really enjoy and that we like is a 360 degree view. And we also like the open concept. One of the things that we would do is have the taller table, the dining table is an option, or the coffee table. The coffee table looks great and it's nice and it gives you more space, it seems more spacious. However, when you're sitting, especially if you're in that corner, when you go to stand up, you're going to be bumping your knees, a lot of knee bumping. A great thing about this boat also is the storage. You take this rubber mallet, suction cup, and this gives you some storage right here. You don't have the holes where you're pulling up the top or the cover, and that's a benefit because then dirt and water is not getting down in there. So we like the suction cup. So it does come with some extra storage here. However, with the galley, I, at, upon first look, I did like this galley. I thought, this is great. This is a nice setup. It looks like it has a lot of storage, but then when you investigate, the galley for storage is what you get. Your pots and pans is what is on this boat. So you have a two shelf 
underneath the sink. You have the three drawers. This is the silverware drawer, so that's pretty much all that can fit in here. Two more drawers about the same size, a little bit deeper. And that's your storage for your galley. With us chartering, we have our snacks and our food up here so you can see how kind of cluttered it is. In here is where they keep the dishes. Some people use, if they have a microwave option, they put the microwave in here. However, this boat, the microwave is over behind the TV. And then this does have the oven. I would like a little bit more storage as far as cabinet space, but you do get a lot of storage um, underneath the flooring. With the sink, you have a little bit larger basin here, but it's not a full-size sink, and then a smaller one. With the large pot last night, what I really liked about the sink was that it has the high top faucet. It was able, I was able to wash the pot in the sink and then rinse it and fit it under here. Um, some boats you just get the smaller basins and that makes it a little bit more difficult to do the dishes. So I do really like this high top faucet. That was a plus. Over here on top is the freezer. I really enjoyed the freezer. You have the tray where you can pull this out. You can do ice cube trays if you want. If you don't, this doesn't have an ice maker. Um, and then you have three storage, which is nice. Then two drawers are the refrigerator. The refrigerator has a rack on top that slides back and forth. And then compartmentainers um, in the middle. And then a second drawer for your refrigerator. And it is tall enough or deep enough to hold, you could do a gallon of milk or a half gallon. We're sitting here at the nav station on the 40 Lucia, and it comes with several options. You can usually get a chart plotter here in this blank space, and you have your VHF and your Bluetooth stereo system. Uh, it's set up on this boat for two zones, so you have an interior and an exterior. You can adjust the volume independently. Uh, they have the battery monitor, the fuel or diesel monitor, and the uh, fresh water monitor. Uh, you got your handheld, you got your uh, white and red light for night vision. And one of the things I haven't noticed on this boat is a waste water monitor. So I'm not quite sure, maybe I haven't found it or maybe they don't have it, but that would probably be something you would want to install. Uh, the nav station countertop uh, opens up for a little bit of storage. You can put maybe a couple charts and your required manuals in here, but uh, that seems to be about it. It's not very deep. And then the uh, material on this one is not wood so as you can see right here somebody accidentally left a pencil on this one when they were opening it up and it has already damaged this and on this boat the electrical panels are separated so you basically have your um, DC and then we'll walk out to the AC panel which is out in the port engine compartment uh, you got your generator here uh, you can power that on start it all uh, push button right here and then all of your uh, equipment here Starts off with all your power nav lights on one side, you got your fridge, hall lights, and all your bilge pumps. In the port aft engine compartment is where the AC panel is located, and you can see it here. There's also the selector switch for the shore power, and the generator is located in this compartment as well. This is the starboard engine compartment. In here they have the Yadmar engine, plenty of room to move around and uh, maintain the engine. Also there are the battery compartments and the charge controller and the steering controls. Alright, so another nice thing we like about this is the flush decks on the Fontaine Peugeot. Most of the hatches that open up to the top of the deck are flush, making it nice to walk back and forth. And then the pulpit seating is pretty nice. So that way you can sit up here, and I know that uh, Sophia and Mia like this and Lisa was up here sitting for a while just watching the water go by so it makes it really nice. The trampoline it is pretty good. It seems a little loose for me though like you sink down quite a bit I'd like something a little bit more tighter and then you got the uh, cushions on the front which is a great place to lay out as you're sailing around too. Yes I like the cushions. 
The anchor locker is large as well. It has a separate compartment for the anchor road along with a saltwater washout. The propane locker to the left and you also have plenty of room for a spare propane tank. One of the things that David and I are looking for in our retirement boat is an owner's version. We would like one whole hall to be our side, our getaway, our serenity area. In this boat, it's a four cabin, so we're going to show you what we're looking at and what we chartered. This is the master cabin on the starboard aft side. I really like the island bed. I'm standing on the step. I can walk halfway back to the bed and then get in bed rather than crawl, crawling in bed. And as you can see, I'm five foot six inches tall and I am not hitting my head. I still have several inches above me. And then I step down. Another option that I like with this boat, with the island bed, is that you have a large deep drawer for storage right underneath the bed. It does have some nice lighting. You have the two either side of the bed um, book lamps, I guess you would call them. And then inside here, I don't know if you can get in here, honey, on the end on either side of the bed, there are hooks so you can hang your towels, your sweaters, um, just whatever you need to hang. And I do like that option. And of course you have some overhead lighting and then you have a fan and curtains. I believe these are um, options that you can get with any of the Fontaine Peugeot boats. So I do like the island style bedding. I'm in the shower, guys. So the shower is a stand-up shower. It has a removable shower head where you can take it down off its post. I really enjoyed that this morning. The water gets hot and it does have enough fresh water that you can take a pretty good showers without worrying about running out of water. And there's plenty of space. I think David and I actually might even both fit in here at the same time. You do have some uh, storage underneath your sink. There's a couple areas, a um, couple shelf areas. And then the toilet, the commode is behind the door here. And you get some extra storage, shelving storage above the commode. As we go to the front of the boat, to the forward part, this is the V berth, um, the starboard V berth. You have, it's a little bit larger than a twin, I believe, but smaller than a full. Uh, and you have the hooks, you also have the reading lamps, there's some shelving in here. A mirror, I think, to make it look a little bit larger since it's a little smaller since you are going forward. Um, nice, and it has it does have a wall cabinet. Here we are back in the salon. To recap, there are several things that we like and didn't like about this boat. However, anytime you're considering buying a boat, whether it's new or used, you really need to take into consideration what are you looking for? What type of options do you want or don't want? Yeah, it seems like there's always a compromise somewhere. Either you buy a, a smaller boat with more things that you want inside or a bigger boat with less things that you want on the inside. There's always price to consider and that's one of the things that we're looking at as well. I think for us, we're wanting to spend less money maybe on a, on a used boat that we can have more money to put into upgrades so we can make it our boat and not spend a lot of money on the front end on a new boat such as this that we're just showing you and then not have the extra sail kitty available to put in the upgrades to make it our own boat. Yeah, I think uh, we were originally really looking forward to uh, purchasing this boat, buying a new boat, getting it set up exactly the way we want. But when we started talking to the dealers, it, it just wasn't going to work out in our favor for the uh, the cost of the boat, the overall cost of the boat. Because we would still have to do certain things to it. Because there are some things we don't like about it, like the helm. Um, I really don't like how the the cutout helms are. They do a lot of uh, boats these days. You know, the lagoons and the fontaines are all the same. So you kind of have this raised helm, where I would prefer to have just a flat hardtop over the entire section, kind of like Antares still does it, and the older Fontaines used to do it that way too, the older Lagoons used to do it that way. It just seems to make um, a little bit more sense. 
So we would still have to do that even if we bought a brand new boat. I'd want to get that taken care of. And there, there are some other things in there that we would still have to do after purchasing the brand new boat. Generator is a must have for us. A water maker is a must have and a hard top uh, bimini. bimini is a must have. Those are, those are on our really would like to have list. And then everything else, it would be luxury items to us. Well, we hope you like this walkthrough of the Fontaine Peugeot Lucia 40. Uh, maybe it helps you decide on what boat you're going to be purchasing next. Mm -hmm. And stay tuned, and we'll figure out what boat we're actually going to end up with. I can't wait to see. What are we actually going to buy? I don't know. We'll see you guys next time. Now I'm ready to see. I'm ready.